we're not a Dutton band. I would say Dutton's a very, very, very strong word, I think. We're, a lot of people in our band are disillusioned Republicans. To me, they're certainly not a Republican movement anymore. I really need somebody to vote for. The UK, like the rest of the world, is in a crisis of political representation. But this is Northern Ireland, and with Brexit threatening to bring paramilitaries back into play, two decades of peace building are at stake. Single drum beat, pass that, pass that, Jim. The Cardinal says say drum. Doesn't say say drum, it's a single beat. I thought it went well, aye. It did, baby. Aye. I think it? some. Oh, it did, aye. aye. I enjoy every parade. So do. The Protestant loyalist paramotors, I know, took a step back, if you know what I mean, but I would say if the likes of the IRA and up their game, then it would just bring everything back again. If it happened, I would certainly do everything to stop it for the for the younger generations. Like. Marching flute bands are at the heart of working class communities across Northern Ireland, both Republican and Loyalist. Well, oh. To many people, the bands represent paramilitaries. They're associated with a decades old conflict that could be resurrected if a hard border goes back up between the North and South when the UK leaves the EU. But for John, David and their bands, marching is about identity. It's about commemoration and community. There's people in our band who can't read or write. And so uh, they join the band and they're treated like equals. I've lost many of friends with suicide. And I was saying, me doing it myself or join the band. And the band gives me a focus on my life day to go out and march on it. Do you need the over, boys? That's uh, Irish. Warlord. Oh, yeah. When did you get that one done? I got that on the year the band started. Which was? 2011. So, um, why did you start the band in the first place? We, uh, there was a lot of antisocial behaviour and stuff. And, Young kids drinking, maybe taking drugs, and all the antisocial behaviour stuff. You know, it was dropped with 50% within the first year, and now there's none at all. And that's proven by a police report. What was causing all the antisocial behaviour? Just nothing to do. There's no political thing about the band. No, it was purely, purely to do with the estate, you know, and a lot of a lot of the band too. It's all would be all family, family oriented, family run. It's a close nut band, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You know? Aye. I'll see you soon, guys. Yeah. Working class communities in Northern Ireland have been hit hard by austerity. They're struggling with drugs, crime, and mental health problems. It has the highest suicide rate in the UK. I and a friend of mine, we went and just followed a drug trail, one drug trail, and we found out more than more than six hours than the police had known. And you know, and to me, it was because the police were happy enough to let the drugs flood the areas like this. That's still the same police force, you know. So if there's no like faith in the authorities. Do you think it does give some strength to the paramilitaries who are offering? Absolutely, yeah, I, I definitely do. I definitely think it does. It happened before and. You know, and unless you change things, unless you try to change history, there's every chance you're going to repeat it. You know, there's absolutely no change made here. Frustration with old sectarian leaders Sinn Féin and the Democratic Unionist Party has seen the rise of new voices. The West Belfast raising has begun. The Socialist People Before Profit Party is neither Republican or Loyalist and it's won the once safest houses Republican seat, Belfast West. 
In this community, people have been presented with a false choice. People before profit has blown that mess out of the water. But more radical alternatives, like the new CIRA party, backed by active paramilitary group, the new IRA, are also getting support from disillusioned Republicans. So this is Declan, who you started the band with. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, when I was growing up, I was shown a road to go, and I went that road, you know. Only because, have, you know, if you were Republican, that was the way to go. Now... And in those days, that was Sinn Féin? That was Sinn Féin, yeah. But if I was growing up now, would I join Sinn Féin? I, I, I don't think so. Genuinely don't think so. And I spent the biggest part of my life as a member of Sinn Féin. So I had, but... You're yeah, administering British Rail. This is my home. I live here. I, I want to bring my children up to be Irish, not to be British. You know, and I'm entitled to do that. I don't, I don't want, you know, British policemen to stop me along the street and... Ask me who I am, where I'm from, what I'm doing, where I'm going to. Things like that. There, you know, it's, we were promised all those days were over. They're not. Republican and loyalist paramilitaries were decommissioned with the Good Friday Agreement in 1998. But while they officially handed over their weapons, they never stood down. The violence was just refocused on internal power struggles. In East Belfast, we got talking to a shop owner about the problems facing working class loyalists. Somebody asked me, Aaron, that's why I'm asking you. The shipyard shorts are struggling. The only job around here for tradesmen is driving taxis and packing shelves. Most people around here would feel the same. Under threat? Yeah. From who? Republicanism. They make me kill Nanny, but they're not run up and down with my rifles are blown up, but they're, they're, there's other ways to fight a war, and that's a hidden war. The Bathany cleansing and taking jobs where the president there is. Have you been to the wee museum over here? Let me show you. Come on over here, come on over here. He took us across the road to meet a friend who invited us along to his band practice. A few hours later, we were in a die-hard loyalist estate in Bangor. It turns out, in this community at least, paramilitary leaders are still powerful and easy to find. The North Down Defenders is run by D. Stitt, widely acknowledged to be the local boss of loyalist paramilitary group, the UDA. So obviously there's a lot of inter-community violence going on, do you know what I mean, within Republican communities and within loyalist communities, do you know what I mean? That's normal society. If you look at any society in London, Manchester, Liverpool, there's always going to be a big guy, do you know what I mean? There's always going to be somebody, a, a leader in that community, and there's always going to be somebody trying to depose that leader. In working class housing states, you know, it's a jungle. Is doing enough to tackle that kind of violence, not now? Inter community violence? No, the British government doesn't fucking fuck about us. People see paramilitary structures, groupings as a negative. Some people will see that as a negative and they'll use that as a negative against loyalist communities. The structure's still there, they're involved in crime, they're involved in drugs, they're involved in racketeer, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? But loyalist, loyalist groupings are doing some brilliant work, involved in community development, involved in running. Fruit bad. Loyalist groups and loyalist community leaders keep drugs out of our communities. Full stop period. It's not here. North Down Defenders is our home land security. You know, it says it in its name. We're here to defend North Down for a manly boy. <laughs> Others within the Loyalist community will do anything to keep the paramilitaries out of their estates. <laughs> when you were growing up and the paramilitaries were more active, it wasn't very fun for you. No. Can you tell me a bit more about that? <laughs> I was in a few ends of a couple of punishment beatings by the paramilitaries uh, with pickaxe handles and hammers and baseball bats. I've got plenty of scars they show as well. It was just recovering from the first and then 
got my second then when I was 16. And at that stage, my girlfriend was pregnant. She collapsed in the hospital, and that was it for me. I just changed my life then and got rid of the paramotors on my life, you know. So how did you get out of that degree? I had to pay £500. So what did. Money well spent? Definitely. The best money I've ever, best £500 I've ever fucking spent. <laughs> so it was... Londonderry is just a few miles away from the Irish Republic. If a hard border does go back up between the north and south, it's border areas like this that will face the greatest economic and security risks. It could happen again. I could, I definitely, 100% it could happen again. But as well, uh, the communities would have to stick up and stand up to them. They stop it happening. And to be fair, this day and age, the community speaks for a lot. Like you see even the Nastas now, they're starting to turn their back on the paramilitaries, on, on, on Belfast and things like that. You know, they don't want it, like, and it's the same as down here. People are disillusioned, so they are. Because I'm disillusioned doesn't make me a dissident. You know what I mean? I, as far as I'm concerned, the war is over. Mm. You know, the war should be over. Everybody's own way of remembering things, you know. Is it right that we should keep marching to remember? I don't know that. I don't know the answer to that either, you know. But while they're doing it, and if they need a band, we're going to be there. That's the way it is. Everybody thinks we're bad cunts, but we're not. This is our culture, this is our life. You know what I mean? We love it. We lo I, I love it, man. I, I love it. I love it. We love it. All the boys! All the boys! All the children! Northern Ireland is still deeply scarred by the Troubles, and it doesn't want them back. If sectarian violence does creep back onto its streets, it will be negligence rather than public appetite that allowed it in. <laughs>